Idle time. Idle time is certainly the devil's plaything. I really have to do this message. Um, idle time is something that's very insidious for people. Like, you know, the first, I mean, people always want to, the first thing they think of is rest, getting some, getting off by themselves and doing nothing. Like they don't want to work. They don't want to do anything. Like that's people's um, Zen, like when they just don't want to do anything, like just sitting, laying around, doing idle time. Man, idle time is a dangerous thing. Everyone has should have a purpose that they are working towards every day. When you wake up, you should have your day should be full of tasks. I mean, so much so to where you may not even get all of them done. That's how that's how your day should be. Like you, you shouldn't be sitting around just like a, a lump on a log, you know, waiting for for scheme for this scheme to come around and scheming up this. See, this is how a lot of people get into trouble. And this is how a lot of people fall into sin. See, Satan uses your idle time when you're not thinking, when your mind isn't focused on the Lord, like you're not reading your Bible, you're not studying, you're not reading, you know, you're not doing things like that. The devil will come in and it's easy for him to come in and fill you with a lot of unnatural thoughts or a lot of thoughts that's going to get you into trouble. That's how you get dudes plotting and seeing uh, other men and women with things and they plotting on them and envying them and things like that. That's why, because of the idle time, they they had time to sit around and, and plot and and figure out, oh man, I don't like this dude, man. I see this dude every time I see him, you know, this this person walking around with some with a new car. This person buying this, I'm buying that. Well, why are you watching them? Why are you sitting around watching them all day? Because you don't have no business. That's what it is. You need to get you some business. Even parents, like even parents, you should be giving your children that you should keep them busy with tasks to keep their mind off of idle uh children's foolishness see satan is easy for him to get to children because again they don't work children don't have to think about nothing they don't have to think about half the things that adults have to think about they don't work so it's easy for satan to come to them and get to talking to them satan really attacks children like he really attacks them hard and that's why it comes with parents to be raising godly children and you're their first line of defense. But with coming with 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 that comes with you giving them daily tasks. You should already understand you should have God makes you privy as a parent to their purpose. You, you on the outside looking in, it's easy for you to see a person's purpose on the outside looking in. You could tell a person like, man, you could do it this way. You could do it this way. You could do that. See, when you when you it's you, it's hard. It's harder for you to see the purpose because you're not on the, You can't be on the outside of yourself. Only God can do that. See, when you get the Holy Spirit, he can take you outside of yourself. I know that sounds peculiar, but he can. The Holy Spirit can do that. And he will allow you to see yourself outside of yourself. He'll allow you in the spirit. He'll take you up in the spirit and allow you to see yourself from the spirit vantage point. And you'll see the aspects of your life that you need to correct or um, you'll see where, where you being, where you need to be led or, or where you, you know, how you need to move, like I said, or what things you need to correct. But when you're in it, it's hard for you to do that. You can't really see where, you, where you're moving wrong. That's where parents come in handy with children. We're their guide. It don't matter if you are their parent, like adults are children's gods. That's why even if I don't have no children, I'm not taking no disrespect from no children. I'm not, you know, you listen to me because I have all of the tools that you need. You better believe that. I've already been through it. But for idle, for children, they so like playing video games all day, sitting idle. Man, you need to get your children. You definitely shouldn't be letting your children sit idly on TikTok and social media. If you see your child on social media for more than 30 minutes and then sitting there, I, I, man, for me, it'll be 30 minutes. I'll give you 30 minutes and then I need to see some movement. If you in your room sitting idly for 30, I'm going to be checking on you, man. You in my house. Ain't going to be no locked doors in my house. You not finna just be sitting there just chilling, just scrolling the internet, scrolling the internet, scrolling the internet. That's Satan. See, the internet is definitely 
had a big hand in creating a big abundance of idle time. It's insidious because people are scrolling, but you're not doing nothing. You're sitting there watching other people. That's idle time. And the devil can enter your, your mind very easy when you do that. Let me go ahead and give you some Bible verse, the book of James chapter one, verse 13 through 15. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil and he himself tempts no one. God doesn't do that. So, but when each person is tempted, we, when he is lured and enticed by his own desire, then desire, when it is conceived, give birth to sin. And when sin is fully grown, it brings forth death. See, God's not tempting you. I'm telling you that. So when you're in the idle time and you need to be when you have time away from your task and work, you really need. I'm telling you this. You really need to be in the Bible, man. You need to be in the word. You know, And if you've already read your Bible, you need to be studying the Bible, going through, you know, different things in it. And you also can be reading other religious texts. You need to be versed in real versed in other religious because that trust me, those books are significant. Anything that has something to do with God or a glimpse of God, they're significant. You know, they may not be as, as significant as the Bible and looked at as the true word of God, but they're significant. You should be getting training yourself in all of those things. Not only just like I said, because they're significant, but also for Christian apologetics. So you'll be able to explain why they don't stand up to Christianity, you know, and you'll be able to explain the holes in, in those things. But you need to be doing this is your purpose. This is part of your purpose, you know, following God is a big part of your purpose. First thing you should be doing is putting God first. When you seek the things of the Lord, all other things are added to you. So you have to first be in your purpose for, you know, um, and doing what God wants you to do. Then God will put you in your true purpose, you know, but everyone has to work. Let me go ahead and get into this. Um, for in second Corinthians chapter 13, verse five, examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves, or do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you fail to meet the test? You have to constantly, like I said, when you get up, you need to be pushing yourself further. You don't, some people like, it's like when you're working out, some people need a personal trainer. No, you need to be personally training yourself to go further. To go further, see, when you have idle time and times of peace, instead of just goofing off, that's when you need to be reinforcing yourself. Unless the devil come and take away what you already built. And no, I had to learn this. I was the first one to come from school. You know, I used to hate school. I'm not going to lie. I mean, it's a bunch of, I, but that, and I didn't realize that it was because I saw it for, for what it was. You know, I'm a true empath and the spirit of the Lord is in me and I can sense spirits. And I saw a lot of the school for the big hypocrisy, for for the, a lot of uh, hypocrisy, a lot of false teaching. You know, I, I saw a lot and I couldn't stand school. The people, you know, high school level, you know how kids are, couldn't stand it. So when I got back home, you know, I just wanted to turn my brain. I just said idle. You know, did a lot of idle things. But what that did was it got it allowed the devil to come into my mind and I created more and more idle time. And then Satan just got stronger and strong. His stronghold over me got stronger and stronger to where I didn't even like the person that I was becoming. I would go, you know, the things that I was gravitating to. I started to go. I started to get farther and further away from the Lord. And I was thinking, like, how is that even possible? You know? But it was because of that idle time. Like I wasn't on my, I wasn't feeling my time with God. I'm playing video games, just laying around, you know, oh, I just don't even want to be bothered. I go on to sleep, sleeping all day, sleeping all day. See, that's a, see, that's a bad thing, especially if you don't have the Lord in your life. If you don't, if you're not, if you don't have the protection of the Lord and the hedge of protection over you and you sleeping all day, see, say every time you go going to sleep, Satan is getting into your subconsciously. He's putting thought and dreams into your mind and all the, all he's sending his demonic beings to do it. He, the familiar spirits who's assigned to you, they've been watching you. These, de these demons, they're watching you. They don't want you to find the Lord. When you sleeping all day, there's every time you go to sleep, you get a subconscious dream put into your mind because you don't remember your dreams. 
because you dream every every one of us dream every time we lay down you don't remember them because you don't have spiritual discernment god hasn't unlocked that ability for you yet you haven't honed that skill so now it's dangerous because your subconscious is getting all of these things and your subconscious is strong and when it's time satan will just turn the switch to activate all that stuff um verse in first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 14 it says we urge you brothers admonish the idle encourage the faint-hearted Help the weak, but be patient with them all. Let me just, just listen. It said, brothers, you admonish. Admonish means to scold, to to um to correct, you know, to you're gonna go go correct them. You gotta admonish and discipline the idol. Tell them, get up, man. Get up. It ain't time to be sleeping, man. Get up. It ain't time to be, you know, doing all this stuff, um, running over here trying to get it. Get a little bit of alcohol, you know, be all drunk. You sitting around, laying around drunk. Man, you idle. Get up. It ain't time to be laid off from you. You know, I, I'm, I'm just going to quit my job and sit around the house. Nah, it ain't time for that. Encourage the faint hearted. Those people who are tired from the work that they're doing. You know, they tired from serving, you know, the, the wars from the Lord that the Lord put them through. They tired. Hey, man, encourage them to get up. The Lord ain't done with you. It's, you know, we still got work to do. It's almost over, but the Lord still got work for you to do. You help the weak, those who don't have the full level of faith, those who ain't in the same walk of light with the walk with the Lord that you are. You encourage them to get them to the next level. You understand? And um, and you be patient with everyone. So all of that requires your patience. It says. It says in a book of Revelation. 3 verse 14 through 22 this is book of revelation chapter 3 14 through 22 and the angel of the church in Lacadocia write the words of the amen the faithful and true witness the beginning of god's creation i know your works you are neither hot nor cold would that you would that you were either cold or hot God would prefer that is what they're saying God would prefer that you were either cold or hot because you were lukewarm neither cold nor hot I'll spit you out of my mouth for you say I am rich I have prospered I need nothing not realizing that you are wretched pitiable pitiable poor blind and naked I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be truly rich and white garments so that you may clothe yourself and the shame of your nakedness may not be seen and salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. What God is saying is that he'll give you the true gifts, but you have some he'll give you the true things that you need to be rich. But some people on this earth, they get up, they'll amass a, a certain amount of money and they look at life like they look at God like, I don't need you, God. I don't need nothing from you. I don't want to I don't want nothing to do with you. I don't even want you involved in my life. You understand? I'm going to sit here. I'm going to take vacations. We're going to be idle. We're going to drink and be merry. We, we ain't got no work to do. You know what I'm saying? They're neither hot nor cold. And God despises that. He'll prefer that you would even just be, you know. That you will be either cold or hot. That you will just say, I serve Satan. You know, that you at least be doing some work for Satan. Putting the work in. No, you just you just sitting around here just a lump on a log. for. You know, you're not even hot nor cold. 